The death toll in Mozambique from Cyclone Idai could reach 1,000, President Felipe Niusu has said. It made landfall close to the port city of Beira on Thursday with winds of up to 177 kilometers per hour, but eight teams only reached the city on Sunday. The official death toll stands at 84 following floodings and high winds which have destroyed homes and ripped roofs from concrete buildings. The cyclone has killed at least 180 people across southern Africa on a visit to Beira. President Niusu said that its impact had been devastating, adding that he had seen bodies floating in the flood water. Earlier, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society, IFRC, described it as massive and horrifying. People have had to be rescued from trees. Head of the IFRC assessment team, Jamie Leso, told the BBC. In neighboring Zimbabwe, 98 people have died and 270 people People are missing in the east and south, the government says. This includes two peoples from the St. Charles Luanga boarding school in the district of Chimani Mani who died after their dormitory was hit when rocks swept down a mountain. Malawi has also been badly hit the flooding there caused by the rains before the cyclone made landfall lead to at least 122 deaths. Relief web reports. At least 84 people have died in Mozambique, mostly around Beira, the country's fourth largest city with a population of about 500,000. The authorities there say more than 1,500 people have been injured by falling trees and debris from buildings, including zinc roofing. The BBC's Joe Stembi in the capital Maputo quotes officials as saying, "Almost everything has been affected by the calamity." Alberto Mondlane, the governor of Sopala province, which includes Beira, said on Sunday, "We have people currently suffering, some on top of trees, and are badly in need of help." Local people in Beira have put in an incredible effort to reopen roads in this city, Mr. Leso told the BBC's Newsday program. Beira has been severely battered, but we are hearing that the situation outside the city could be even worse. A statement from the IFRC quotes him as saying, the road linking Beira to the rest of the country has been damaged, but air links have now resumed. President Philippe Niusu cut short a trip to Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland, to visit the affected areas. A state of disaster has been declared in Zimbabwe. President Emerson Nangawaya has returned home early from a trip to the United Arab Emirates to make sure he's involved directly with the national response, the authorities say. The Ministry of Information has shaped pictures of people from St. Charles, Longa School, who have now been rescued. The government has declared a state of disaster in areas affected by this storm. A cyclone that ripped across Mozambique and Zimbabwe has killed at least 162 people with scores more missing and caused massive and horrifying destruction in the Mozambican city of Beira, authorities and the Red Cross said Monday. Cyclone Idai tore into the center of Mozambique on Thursday night before barreling onto neighboring Zimbabwe, bringing flash floods and ferocious winds and washing away roads and houses. The scale of damage caused by Cyclone Idai that hit the Mozambican city of Beira is massive and horrifying. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Society's IPRC said in a statement, it said 90% of the city of some 530,000 people and its surrounding area had been damaged or destroyed. The situation is terrible. The scale of devastation is enormous. The IPRC's Jemmy Lasso was quoted as saying in this statement, Almost everything is destroyed. Communication lines have been completely cut and roads have been destroyed. Some affected communities are not accessible, he said. A large dam burst on Sunday and cut off the last road to Beira, he said. A toll compiled Monday by FP from official sources puts the death 
tall in Mozambique at 73, including 55 in Bere alone and 89 in Zimbabwe. At least 150 more are missing in Zimbabwe, many of them believed to government workers whose housing complex was engulfed by floods. Mozambique's environment minister, Celso Korea, warned that the death toll would rise. I think this is the biggest natural disaster Mozambique has ever faced. Everything is destroyed, he told AP on Sunday night, said at Baira International Airport, which reopened after being temporarily closed because of cyclone damage. In Zimbabwe, they swept away homes and ripped bridges to pieces, leaving a tale of destruction that the acting defense minister, Peranz Shuri, said resembles the aftermath of full-scale war. War. There was a lot of destruction both on our facilities and on people, said Shiri speaking on television from the affected Eastern Highlands region. Roads have been swallowed by massive sinkholes while bridges were ripped to pieces by flash floods, according to an AP photographer. This is the worst infrastructural damage we have ever had. Zimbabwean Transport and Infrastructural Development Minister Joel Bigi Matija said Zimbabwe's eastern district of Jimani Mani was the worst hit part of the country, with houses and most of the bridges washed away by flash floods. The most affected areas are not yet accessible and high winds and dense clouds have hampered military rescue helicopter flights. Two people and a worker at a secondary school in the area were among those killed after landslide sent a boulder crashing into their dormitory. Soldiers on Sunday helped rescue the surviving nearly 200 people, teachers and staff who had been trapped at the school in Chimani Mani. The teachers and school authorities are making all efforts to ensure the children arrive and we take them home, but it seems the situation is getting worse. One unnamed parent told the state broadcaster JBC as she raised concerns about the ongoing rains. Joshua Sako, lawmaker for Chimani Mani, told AP by phone that between 150 to 200 people are missing. The majority of them are thought to be government workers whose housing complex was completely engulfed by raising waters. Their fate is currently unknown because the area is still unreachable. We are very worried because all these houses were just suddenly submerged under water and literally washed away and that is where we have about 147 missing, he said. Zimbabwean President Emerson Nongawa, who cut short a visit to Abu Dhabi said on arrival on Monday, were deeply grieved as a nation. News taken from BBC. Thanks for watching.